Welcome to our plate tectonics simulation here. We're going to be modeling something that's a little complicated to understand in a way that will hopefully spark your imagination and make it make a better sense. So the really awesome thing about our science is we can model things on a small scale that happen in a big scale on Earth. And it's not exactly going to be the way it happens, but there's going to be some similarities and some processes and concepts that directly relate to the big processes that happen on Earth. So we're going to be using hot chocolate being heated over some milk in order to model how plate boundaries form and why plates move and the like. So in this model, what we did is we took some milk and we poured it into a pot. This is whole milk. And what we've done is we've sped this up three times the speed because it happened really slowly over an hour or more. But now we're going to put the hot chocolate powder on top. And the milk is representing our mantle on the plastic mantle, the asthenosphere that can flow by convection. The hot chocolate powder above is going to be the lithosphere, which is the crust on the upper mantle, that rigid mantle. So we have this fluid milk, which is going to be the base for a brittle and breakable hot chocolate powder, which sets our stage for the real earth. Now we're going to heat it up, right? Because the, the earth is hot and it's heated from within. That core of the earth area is super hot and that's going to heat the other layers above it. So we're heating the asthenosphere, or the milk, even though you don't see it anymore. And now we're going to be waiting. And again, I've sped this up. You can see that the sides are changing a little because of the heat, but we're going to be focusing on the hot ch chocolate powder in the middle. And you're going to start to see some changes that are happening now to it as a result of the milk being heated from below. So here we go, we can start to see some cracks forming in our hot chocolate. And again, we've sped this up, but you're going to start to see those cracks grow more and more. And what's happening is that the milk is being heated from below, and by convection, that Hot milk on the bottom of the pot is rising up to the top because its density has been lowered by the heat and it's exerting a pressure, it's exerting a force on this hot chocolate powder which is brittle, it's movable, breakable and you're seeing right now the effects of that. So I'm going to pause the video for a moment. So what we're seeing here is plate boundaries forming, right? So we have learned about that Pangaea was a supercontinent of the Earth at one point, and it broke into many smaller continents, and you can start to imagine what's going on over here. So we're seeing some boundaries here, and clearly over here we're seeing a divergent plate boundary, actually all of these are at this point. And as we see them widen, what's coming up from below is our milk. And you can imagine in real life when the crust of the earth breaks apart and separates, what comes up from below is molten material, lava. So we're going to imagine that these are volcanoes forming over in these areas. And we can see now another process about to happen here, which is subduction. So the milk has risen to the top, it's cool, and now it's going to sink, and it's going to start to bring down crustal material into the earth. So we have here a really neat model of what really happens on earth using some simple tools. I mean, we're going to go through this again to see some, uh, a few different things over here. All right, so at this point now, we can see those cracks forming. And 
what I love about this part here is you can imagine right now Pangaea splitting into the different continents of the Earth. Here we have a divergent boundary, right, where we'd have volcanoes. Here we have nice plates forming. So you can imagine when we look at that plate boundary diagram, we can see why these things are actually happening here on in a real life scale. So if we so if we bring in our real reference table here on page five, we can see the plate boundaries here, right? And we can see why the brittle lithosphere, again, brittle means easily broken, form the plates. The plastic mantle below, which we can bring in over here now, right? That plastic mantle, the asthenosphere, is being heated by the hot layers below, and it's moving, and it's exerting a force on that lithosphere, that crust and that rigid mantle, breaking it and actually moving it in the plates as we've seen. So we can see, we've seen a lot of divergent plate boundaries, and then at the end, we see the convergent plate boundary. So let's go through this again and see what we can see. All right, so we have our distinct continents now separated by, looks like these oceans, so to speak. And we can actually see movement, if you look carefully, of the continents. They're not staying in the same exact spot. You can see this one is moving, and you can imagine it's moving into this one, and it's gonna be colliding like India crashing into China and the Himalayas, and now we're getting our subduction. And crustal material is being destroyed. And it's created at a divergent boundary when that lava comes up, and now it's destroyed at a subduction zone where it's sinking back into the earth. All right, this third time that we did it, I'm jumping right to the end here. And we can see our plate boundaries here very clearly. And we're going to see another example of subduction. This is going a little slower at first over here. So you can see the hot chocolate powder sinking because this has cooled and this density has gone up. And that was um, the end of our, our demonstration over there. As you can see, things get um, messy in a quick moment there. So as a quick review here, it's important to know that what's going on the inside of the earth is affecting our outside. So we have the hot inner core and our outer core, which is exerting a moving force on the asthenosphere. And on your reference table, the hours are rising to show that by convection, it's heating up and becoming less dense. And where it rises, we get our ridges and the plates are separating. Why do we get a ridge? Is that lava is rising on the surface and cooling to form new crust. And then we see over here on the other side, so this would be like the eastern side of North America. Here's the western side where we have subduction zone where the asthenosphere is cooled and starts to sink. It drags down crust with it. So here's our subduction zone and that's where we're going to get a trench and we're going to get volcanoes when this melts and lava rises to the surface again. So it's a really fascinating way of showing the stuff that we see on the Earth's surface really happening and, and just using some simple materials at home. So we're going to bring in this page of the reference table that has the plates one more time. And you can see our mid-Atlantic ridge over here is where, again, that, at that asthenosphere is rising and we're getting new crust. But that's not the only place we're getting new crust, right? We have 
areas here, the East Pacific Ridge. And if you think back to the hot chocolate, that's where that milk was rising up. So we have underwater volcanoes here and here and here. The west coast of North America is where our subduction is, right? Whenever we have this symbol, we're getting convergent plate boundaries and subduction. And so that's happening over here is that the SNS was cooling and sinking and dragging down crust. And you can see a lot of areas where subduction is happening and we're getting that kind of a feature where we're getting volcanoes because that eventually heats up enough and melts and that molten material rises to the surface to create the volcanoes. So again, a great summary here, using just some chocolate powder, a pot and the stove and some milk of how our earth is really in action. A really amazing place and all these things are happening due to things that are complicated but understandable when we break them down.